How you doing, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Compelling Conversations, and more importantly, part 2B of Ripples in the Desert Sand series <laughs> with Josh. I'll explain what ripples in, ripples in the desert sand means. Later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, guys, um, this this episode, uh, I'm excited for this one, I, you know, because cause I, I knew, like, the basics of Josh's story condensed into, like, 30 minutes, some... 30 minute chunks over the course of us being friends but there's a lot of nitty-gritty that i don't know that i've wanted to know for a long time so i'm excited for this personally like this is an adventure for me too man um yeah. so seriously uh without further ado we're going to be talking about teachers and administration and i'll let you take it away from there all right man thanks a lot um I'm excited to be here. So again, and uh, for some odd reason, you know, I always get nervous doing these things and go a little excited and nervous. And I don't blame you, man. Hopefully, everything sounds coherent. <laughs> I don't blame you at all, man. Um. So, teachers, administration, students, and relationships. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, you're just throwing that one out there. Yeah. Um. You know, when I got there. I was introduced to a student uh, who was a great student. He was a hard worker, both, uh, you know, doing his job and um, in, in, in doing homework as well. He was, you know, um, he was a smart kid. He worked hard in school, worked hard uh, for his, you know, to pay his school off as well. Was he Egyptian or he Sudanese? Was, he was Egyptian. Um, cool. <clears throat> And, you know, you work with these, you know, I worked close with him. He showed me around. He, you know, gave me a tour of the neighborhood. Um, you know, showed me the ropes around the place. And that was very appreciated. I was very, very. Sounds like a nice guy. He was a great guy. He was a great kid. Um, except he had a kind of a past. <laughs> <laughs> and and this, the events that I'm going to be talking about happened a year prior to me arriving hmm. so he and i i was actually surprised that he told me this story because of how you know we we only worked for like a few weeks together and all of a sudden he started opening up to me yeah so he one day you know i was i was in his room he was showing me his room excuse me and he's all and he's he tells me Mister, I have something to tell you. And I said, okay, sure. And he starts telling me the story about how he had a relationship with a teacher. That did was... he know the teacher? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knew the teacher. Well, no, well yeah, he was a student. Know, oh, know I didn't the know the teacher, no. I never got to meet her. But you knew what she looked like, knew people? Knew yeah, he, he showed me pictures of her. He showed me a letter that she wrote to him when she when they asked her to leave. She had a, he was telling me the relationship that he had with this particular teacher. So the way, all right, he opened up to you, huh? Yeah, I was quite surprised. <clears throat> but you find that most people do out there anyway. So. <laughs> because the thing, teenagers or at least these kids, you know, they wanna, they want you to relate to them. So they open up. Yeah. And they want to see if you can relate to that, man. If they can relate to you. So the way this story started... Oh, now, again, this is... This is... From what I heard. And from what he told me. And from what I heard from other teachers. Yeah. So there was a teacher there... That was about, man, she was already a little older. I want to say she was about 40. Yeah. And <clears throat> she, from what I heard, she had a really rough time. She was a very emotional teacher. Oh, wow. If students would say, you know, you don't know how to teach, she would start to break down. She would cry? She would cry in class. Now, I had a lot of teachers tell me, I had a student tell me, you're not a real teacher. And I said, you're right, I'm not, but I'm the best you're going to get. So shut up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I told them, oh, yeah, these kids were brutal. My first year, these kids, were, they, wanted to, they wanted to break you down. 
So yeah, didn't I had work with you though. No, not really. No, I didn't. No, yeah, I didn't. I did anything didn't ever care. get to you a little bit? Not when it came to well, I had to walk out of class a couple of times. So yeah, things, you know, stuff did get to me. But yeah, when a student told me you're not a real teacher, I says you're right, I'm not. But I'm the, I'm dumb enough to leave everything behind and come teach you. So shut up and listen to me and, you know, do your work. So that was one of my react. You know, that's how I responded to that. Yeah. Probably not the best way, <laughs> but at that point, I took the gloves off. I don't know, man. <laughs> the, the tough love thing is growing on me a lot. It, it's, it has its place. It definitely has its place. Yeah. So anyways, this teacher, <clears throat> yeah, she was very emotional. And when students would tell her, you, you're not a good teacher, she would break down and cry. And there would be this whole drama going on. And I remember, or from what I heard from people telling me this story, and the way that relationship started was she was, she was working in the, in the library, and she needed a new worker. From what I heard, she, was, she always had complaints about the workers that she had. And what do you and, mean, the workers? Yeah, because every, or every teacher had a TA. Oh. And so she would always come up with some type of complaint. Like, oh, he's not showing up. or. So you had a TA too? I did have a TA. Was he good? Uh, one of the smartest in school, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I actually, I trusted him so much. I, I, I said, you know what? I told my TA, you know what? Grade however you want to grade. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I trusted him. He was a smart guy. He's actually, he, he's actually one of the few who came to the States. Wow. To study. And so she would have nothing but complaints and and she would always request male students. Now in that culture you always match up female female, male male. That I'm surprised anyone would want a, why would a female want a male student in that culture, you know? Yeah, exactly. But she would always request male students. And from what I heard, she she tried to make advances on other students, on other male students. But the other male students apparently never bit. Or so this you know. is the emotional one. That this is the emotional one. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what should we call her? <laughs> um, we'll just call her Miss T. Because <laughs> I don't remember her real name. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So she would always, Miss T would always ask for male teachers. From what I heard, she tried making advances on other students, but they ne- they didn't fall for it until she got one student that did. And that's Damn. where that relationship started. Damn. So how did she how did she snag him? Like, well, when you're you know, she was American, you know, white. White American Wait, was girl. she pretty? That might no, be she wasn't. Question. No, she was not. I'm sorry to say, every woman, every woman is beautiful in her own way. <laughs> I'm sure she, I'm sure, I'm sure she was beautiful somewhere. In her, you know, yeah. I don't want to. You know, yeah, Every sorry, woman, every woman is beautiful in her own way. I didn't mean to ask that question. <laughs> well, I did, but yeah. physically, I was no. I didn't find her physically attractive. You personally did not. I did. Okay. I personally did not. Let's find go with that. Her. Let's go with that. Yeah. I personally did not find her attractive. And I think a lot of people agreed with me. <laughs> okay, I don't... <laughs> I think it's funny how you added that. <laughs> um, but... And that that's how that relationship started. So she, she requested a male student. It was this particular student. And he fell for her. And now being, you know, white American teacher, oh, that is an upward opportunity for any Egyptian man. Oh, to go to America. Oh, so that opportunist. Now, yeah, that is always an opportunity. That is, you know, why not? So I've heard lots of stories of European women, um, American women. Old, we're talking about older women here, too. We're talking about 40, 50. Wow. Coming to Egypt 
and finding younger Egyptian men. And that's so weird. To snagging me. them. Yeah. That's so weird to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had a, yeah, <laughs> I had a, I had a student reveal some secrets to me about that. Wow. That there's uh, you know, European, older European women, 40, you know, 40, 50, even 60 looking for, Damn. looking for, you know, looking for a partner. So they go to these countries and then they know the partner will, yeah, well, it's a young guy who wants an opportunity at a better life. I mean, don't they and, know that that's fake? Oh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Wow. And so it's just an opportunity for these young, you know, male, young males to get out of their country yeah. and go to a better one, quote unquote. Yeah. And that was the situation with this guy, with this particular student. And this is the nice guy that... This is yeah. This is the guy who, who helped me out. Okay. We'll call him Jay. All right. Um. So they started having this relationship, and people started catching on. The, and word got to the principal. Yeah. And they kind of found out. You know, they found them out, and. They told her that she had to either end this relationship. I can't. They told her to either end the relationship or she had to go home. And she said, okay, I'm ending the relationship. Wait, how'd they find out? You know, I don't know if you can ever hide. Like, it's like telling your girlfriend, you know, I want to be in a relationship with you, but when we're around my friends, you know, don't show any emotion. <laughs> oh, and she would show? Yeah, she would show it. Or he would show. That's it. oh my gosh. That's yeah. So it yeah they yeah. And plus Egyptians, it, well I should say, hormonal teenagers can't keep secrets. <laughs> Fair enough, actually. <laughs> can't keep secrets. So he would he would brag to his friends about having one of uh, one of the teachers as a girlfriend. <laughs> I actually don't blame him. That's actually kind of that's actually kind of funny. I don't know why. I just think it's funny. Well, and I I think it was just a sign of like manhood and respect. Like I I snagged an American teacher. Yeah. So, yeah. not an attract not an attractive one, but, but still, um still. yeah still um. But she, they didn't end the relationship, and they still kept do they, they still kept this relationship up. And the principal found out again, and they said, you're going home. This Miss T actually suffered from depression. Oh, jeez. And also suffered from what all of us suffered from, loneliness. Yeah. Egypt is, a, is you know, it, it gets lonely out there. And <clears throat> when you start to feel lonely, you're you're looking for attention wherever you can get it. Yeah, we're gonna get back to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and part two C, you probably. And I, I am a victim of that depression during my time there in Egypt. Yeah. Depression and loneliness. Um. <clears throat> and also, she, she, she had depression. She was, she had, you know, suffering from loneliness. But she, from what I heard, she also had mental illness. Oh, of what kind? I, I don't know. My depression, maybe. I, I don't know. But they ended up flying her back to the States and says, you wow. can't you can't be here anymore. <clears throat> Get mental health. wonder how her aftermath was. Well, here's the thing. Going back to the student, he actually showed me a letter that she wrote to him telling him how she loved him, how she wanted to be with him. And even showed me a video of her saying, I love you to him. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty gross. It was pretty disturbing. Um, how a teacher can do this with a student. Right, so wait, he had a, he had a smartphone? How did he yeah, it? yeah. They, they all had smartphones. Oh, really? Okay. Tablets. Yeah, it's not, the stone, <laughs> it's not necessarily the Stone Age. Well, I, know, I just thought yeah. they were too poor. No, no, they, no, no. It's, yeah, yeah okay. it's not a, it, it seems like the Stone Age, but it's not. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so he showed me, yeah, it it was pretty disturbing 
That sounds kind of disturbing. How, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're there to teach, not to date the student. You're here, you're there to teach students, not to date them. And yeah. also, it, I don't know, for me, it was a little bit disturbing because this woman's like, I don't know, 40, 50, 40. And she's trying to pick up a 16 year old. Wait, he was 16? About 16, 17. Okay, that is disturbing. That's really disturbing. And, oh man, this is this is getting real. This get, yeah. To not make a big deal out of it, they sent her home. Because if the sketchy. government gets, I don't know, I don't know what the government would, if the government, Egyptian government finds out about what was going on, they would get involved and most likely shut the school down. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, it's a good yeah. thing they didn't find out. Well, they, they, the principal, luckily, he, sees this, this is where the principal actually really stepped in, stepped up. Yeah. He gave her a chance. She violated that and said, you're out of here. Um, luckily, it was just, you know, there wasn't any physical intimacy between the student and the, and the teacher. Oh, there wasn't? No, there wasn't. How do you know that? I don't. <laughs> but from what I from what I've heard, there wasn't, and from what he told me, there probably was. There wasn't. Right? After maybe, but from what he told me, from what I've heard, so they sent her back. He shows me this letter saying how much she loved him, how she wanted to be with him. Shows me a video of her telling him, "I love you." In in my second year, <clears throat> or near the end of my first. And into my second, I heard that she was trying to come back. Really? Yeah. And I heard that she wanted to come back to Egypt because she wanted to marry an Egyptian man. Um, that's why she wanted to come back. And so the principal said, no, you're not coming back. I think it was the reason. kid? Not for him, no. Oh. I think she moved past that. It was just a random Egyptian guy? Yeah, she just wanted to marry an Egyptian guy. That's weird. Yeah. And for someone like her, she could easily snag an Egyptian man. Because most Egyptian guys want to leave Egypt and go yeah. to America. You think, dude, you know what's sad about this man is... You think she's just faced so much rejection yeah. in oh, yeah. the United States that she basically... Loved that Egyptian kid and and wanted to marry an Egyptian because that was her way of coping with rejection and and feeling accepted. You know, as yeah, yeah. That's actually very sad. Then. Yeah, it's extremely sad. And I actually noticed that about other girls. Kind of sympathize with her. That one. Yeah, I noticed that about other girls that were there too. Um, because she, you know, she white, fair, white skin blue eyes and that's a big deal out there yeah so and it's also you you see that the past american passport you know citizenship yeah it's it's a ticket out of there but she didn't want to live in the states she wanted to live in egypt what the hell why i don't know this is just this is just from information that i've gathered from credible sources i wonder why she would want to live in egypt i don't know and she must so have had she, a hard time back home. Yeah, she well, she suffered. Yeah, she had mental illness and couldn't really make ends meet. Yeah. Um. So she and actually she did end up going back to Egypt. Oh, she did. Yeah. And worked at an animal shelter. Oh wow. Yeah. So she found a way. She she did, but from what I've research or from what I've tried to investigate, she didn't find quote-unquote, a husband, an Egyptian husband. Who's telling you all this? I snoop around. <laughs> Fair enough. I snoop around. Because I, I try to put pieces, you know, I you hear about stories about particular people, and then and you somehow... finish the story. Yeah, somehow you see a picture of them on Facebook or something. <laughs> yeah. And then you kind of see, oh, what is this person up to? Yeah. So... Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Um... And and so she was. She made it back to Egypt, working at a volunteering of all of all things, at yeah, an wow. animal animal shelter. Volunteering? Yeah, 
at an animal shelter and she was trying to make it she was going back home to the states and she didn't have a place to stay she was going to she was claiming she was going to be homeless well how the hell was she paying for the trips to Egypt I don't know stuff? I don't know dude I don't know weird yeah um <clears throat> but that was the story about that relationship with that student and that teacher now that's pretty mild to what happened two years prior to me showing up. There was another, so the prior to, you know, two years prior to me showing up, there was another. So that was what, one year prior before you? Yeah. And there was another one two years prior. Prior to that. Oh, so three prior, three prior to you showing up or two years prior? Two years, two years. Okay, sorry, sorry. I should have started with that one first. (laughs) The one, this one was, actually out of a nightmare because this is something yeah this is something you hear in the news oh geez now there was this real attractive female american teacher wait she was really that attractive she was an attractive girl i saw pictures of her huh she was an attractive girl she comes not yeah she comes to, to egypt as an esl teacher and there was an Egyptian guy, tall, good looking guy. Yeah. Who was very in tune with Western culture. Huh. He knew the latest pop songs, you know, rap songs, whatever. Yeah. Knew new Western culture. Knew how to talk like he was from the West Coast. Oh wow. So he had like good English, huh? Yeah, he had solid English, man. This guy this guy had it down. He knew how was to... Was he smart? Was he a good student? No, he wasn't a good student. <laughs> Wait, why? He just... He he didn't care enough. Oh. He didn't. And I'll talk more about the student because he... I, 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 Me and him... Me and him got to know each other. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But this guy is from... I think he was from Alexandria. Where's that? That's uh, near the Mediterranean. So wait, was he like, why was he in Egypt and why? Well, well, he he's Egyptian and he decided to go to the school to, you know, get his, you know, just to do high school. So what do you mean he's Alexandrian then? No, he he's from Alexandria. Oh, but he moved to Egypt? For what reason? No, no, Alexandria is in Egypt. <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry, man. It's okay. Alexandria is in Egypt. It's one of the cities. I don't know why I thought that was a country. <laughs> I was like, I've never heard of this, but I'm assuming it's a country. No. It, it's a city in, in Egypt. I'm dumb. No, no, it's fine. And so he he's he's a city kid. Really well in tune with Western culture. Knew, know, knows how to talk to girls. And he just, him and this girl met. And they hit it off. The teacher? Yeah. They met and she they hit it off. Um Oh jeez. And in that relationship there Oh man. <laughs> they were seen making out a couple times. They were seen? They were seen by other students. Oh my gosh. Making by out by other students. By other students. Where? Just on campus. Of on campus of all places. Uh, like they didn't even try to hide it? They didn't even try to hide it. That's f- or they may have, but they were still seen. That, that's weird, man. Um, it was it was just very obvious that they were together. How young was this kid? Oh, he was older now. He was like 18. Uh, how old was the teacher? She was like 20-something. Oh, so it's not that weird, I guess. Well, you're there to teach. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean that... The age, yeah, it's le- quote-unquote legal. The teaching part is weird, but it's... Like the age thing isn't as weird, right? As, right. Still weird, but not yeah. as weird. I mean, you're 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 allowed to come teach here because you have the ability to speak good, you know, English and teach it. Yeah. You're not, you know, you're not there to pick up on the students. Yeah. And they would actually sneak off campus together. Um, and do whatever they felt like doing <laughs> oh jeez, dude <laughs> and so one one time 
they were caught coming back. And the principal asked them, where were you guys? And they had a pretty good alibi. What was it? They had some of his cousins or something vouch for them that they were there at their place doing who knows what. When in reality, they were running off to like hotels. Now, remember, this is these are stories that I've heard and collected, and the, where I got these stories were pretty credible sources. Yeah. Um, so the principal said to the you know to the teacher, "That's it. You're gone. You're out of here. For, no, you're not even allowed to get out. You know, you're house arrest. You can't even get out." Wait, what? Yeah, they house arrested her because they didn't they didn't want to risk anything else happening. As in what? Oh, like, I don't know. Being seen with a guy or them running away. How do you house arrest someone? You just tell them not to come out. That's it. I mean, they don't have any legal binding on that, do they? <laughs> anything goes in Egypt, man. So anything. wait, they just forced it, enforced it. The, yeah, they themselves? just they just said you're not allowed to come out. They had a big guy like in no like, no hold but the door shut or what? No, they just they just said. From if I remember correctly, they said, from what I heard, you're not allowed to leave your dorm. Just stay. Couldn't stay there. She, Pack your stuff up because you're leaving the next day. Oh, the next day. Yeah, she was gone the next day. I was confused. I thought you meant that. Uh, I thought you meant that like the house arrested her for months or something. No, 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 no. She was leaving within days. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was leaving within days. Um. They actually went to Sinai together. Her and her, her and, and the student? student. Yeah, they went to Sinai by themselves. <laughs> I, if I remember correctly, and actually wow. he proposed to her. Wow. Yeah, on on Mount Sinai. Wow. And there's actually I. Oh man, <laughs> I better not say this particular information because I don't want people go lo- looking it up online. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they, he proposed to her, um, and so they were engaged. Jeez, dude. But then they were shipping her out, so it was going to be a long-distance relationship. Jeez. Was she going to try to get him over the stage? Yeah, he, he, they, he, was, he was trying to – yeah, she was going to try to get him over there. Did it work? I don't know what happened exactly. I think he, I think he got his visa actually accepted, his paperwork accepted by the embassy. Wow! So he actually went. He went. He probably did it. So, yeah, because he told me that his he got his paperwork was accepted by the U.S. embassy and he got his stamp, like his ninety day stamp or whatever. So you think they moved it? Do you think they're married? No, because in the end, I think, I think she cheated on him, what? and he decided not to go. Wait, what? Yeah, he decided he decided not to go back, he, or he decided to not go to the states. In the end, why would he not go to the states? I don't know, because it's. I think it was just a ninety day fiance visa or something. Ninety day, like you have to get married within ninety days. Oh crap! Yeah, that's I, a thing. I, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've I've reached researched all of that. <laughs> there's fiance visas. Yeah, there's they're like a ninety day thing. That's insane, man. Yeah, and I think that's what he got. And 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 I, if I remember correctly, he told me that she cheated on him, and he decided not to go. Wow, man, he almost had his ticket out. Almost. Well, he yeah, pretty much. He well, he could have gone and not come back. <laughs> he could have stayed there. He could have stayed here illegally. But I'm surprised just to go to America, he didn't. He didn't try. Well, I don't think he decided not to go. I think she didn't want to marry him anymore, right? I don't. I don't know. But I. I. I don't know. Maybe. But I'm only you know regurgitating the information that I heard. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Fair enough. So he told me that she cheated on him, and he decided not to go. Okay. And that was the end of that thing. That was the end of that. Yeah. Okay. That's. Why do you say that's a horror movie? Man, because like just cuz it's disgusting. Yeah, dude. It's it's like student teacher relationship. Yeah, I mean 
Like really? <laughs> and the thing yeah. is, and the thing is is like the school covered it up, dude. They they covered up they tried covering up the first one and when they saw that it got too out of control, they they got rid of her. This one they did everything they could to cover it up too. They did pretty good jobs covering it up. And when it got out of control, they just left, you know, get out. Get out of here. Wow. Now he she got sent home and he got kicked out of school. Oh really? Yeah. He missed an entire year of school. And when I came back, that's when he he was coming back. They allowed him to come back. They allowed him to return. So he was your student? He was one of my students. Wow. Yeah. Um, and he he opened up quite a bit to me too. And I don't know why some of these I don't know why it's always like the troublemakers opening up to me. I don't I don't get it. Um but he told me his story. He told me what, what happened. And I, you know, and I, I tried not to be judgmental. And I told him, you know what, Matt? I get it. You're a hormonal kid. You know, you saw an attractive young woman and you went after her. Yeah, you were stupid for doing that. But I hope you learned your lesson. <laughs> yeah. And he, he, he actually like was, he liked me, I guess. <laughs> so he kept telling me stuff and he, you know, he always looked for me to say, Hey, what's up? You know, so he tell thought me you were a cool guy. Huh? I guess he thought I was a, a chill guy because he always would come back, tell me stuff, ask for advice. Maybe yeah. it's because he understood American culture. He understood America. He understood Western culture, and I think, I think the reason he gravitated towards me is because I wasn't I wasn't so judgmental to, towards him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I told him he was dumb for doing that, and he knew that too. But yeah, I try not to be like fire and brimstone on him. Uh, there was another group a college group that came by to visit the school. And again, you get these attractive young American girls <laughs> coming by and he goes nuts and tries to get one of the girls. He tries to take out one of the girls, you know, to a restaurant <laughs> one-on-one -on -one, and man, did the, the principal and the vice principal just came down on him like fire and brimstone dude. And just told him, leave the girl alone. You're hey, nothing but she was just a college student. Yeah, she was a college student. So is that off limits? Why? Because she's young and naive. Oh. <laughs> and again, like you get these weekend vacationers, you know? Yeah. And they think that trash on the street is cool. <laughs> and they're very, you know, these girls are young and... They think that trash on the street is cool. <laughs> and you get this cool guy who's suave with the girls tall, good-looking Egyptian guy, has swag, you know? And these girls are captivated. He's like a pickup artist. <laughs> he was pretty good, huh? He was smooth, man. He was he was suave with the girls. He was suave with the ladies. Wow. And had one of them bagged up, and the pr principal and the vice principal just came down on him and said, nope, leave him alone. They told him, go back to your dorm. And he just... Went off fuming, dude. He was pissed, huh? Oh, super pissed, dude. Yeah, he was super upset. You know, he was he was he was a good kid. He worked. You know, he did the bare minimum. But he was just a very hormonal kid, man. He just wanted to. He just. Well, yeah, yeah. man. He had the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, and and. He sh he he shouldn't he probably shouldn't be in a high school setting. He should probably already be in college <laughs> at that yeah. at that particular time. Yeah. Um, I remember one time I had to apologize to him for what? Because he was trying on his he was graduating and he was trying on his um his graduation gown or robe or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I told him 
take that off. You're barely passing my class. You don't deserve that. Wait, really? Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, uh, crossed the line there. Um, he was, was he? of course, he was hurt about that. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't blame him. Yeah. That one's a little bit. Harsh. Yeah. That I crossed the line there. Do you feel bad? Oh yeah. And I told him, look, I'm sorry. I crossed the line and I, you didn't deserve to hear that or, you know, to be treated that way. Yeah. And he gave me like, you know, a hug and said, it's all right. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't know. I, if a teacher told me that I would have been like, forget you, man. <laughs> it's war. I'm going to go tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go cry to my mom. <laughs> um, but no, he was, he was cool about it. And actually, this guy, he invited me a couple of times to Cairo. And he showed me around. He gave me a tour of the city, dude. So at some of my lowest... So you hung out with this guy. I did. And because at some of my lowest points, he was like, he was there. He's like, mister, let me take you out. What a nice guy, man. He was, he was super chill. And he introduced me to some of his friends, which were all girls. <laughs> no way. Yeah, which were all girls. And we had we had some good times, man. This guy's sly, man. Dude, man, this guy had I swear this guy had like three girlfriends. <laughs> he well, was just he was polygamous just polygamous culture. Yeah, it is, yeah. But he was Christian though, or quote unquote. He was Christian? Quote unquote. What do you mean? Like well, like he didn't follow Christian teachings. Yeah, he's Christian. He, yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, he later came sense. out as saying he was atheist. Oh, I see. But anyways, um, but his parents were Christian, and yeah. So yeah, he yeah. Some of my, actually, some of my, some of the best memories I had was actually hanging out with this kid. Hmm. I tried to keep it minimal. I only went me. I think it went have been. Might have been like three times we hung out. I didn't want to hang out with him too much. Could he have gotten in trouble for that? Uh no, I want to say no, but it would have riz it would have raised some eyebrows though. Yeah, you and the student your own student are hanging out. Well, not only that, is this kid has a troubled past. And what is this teacher hanging out with a troubled student? Well, they think uh they think that maybe like He's he's bribing you or something. Yeah, that, there was a big fear of that as well going around. Did people think that about you? No, no, no. Well, well, st the students were known to bribe stu to bribe teachers. None of our none of our teachers. But no one ever bribed you, though, right? Oh, dude. Yeah. What they bribe you with? Did Food. this kid ever bribe you? No. But my student, and I don't know if they're. I always took it as a joke, but they bribed me with like food. <laughs> and and when I'm eating rice and bread every day, a nice platter of chicken looks really good, man. <laughs> oh, did, were you tempted sometimes? No, no, I don't want to. No, I don't think I don't want to say I ever was. But sometimes they brought up a platter of chicken and they're like, "Give me an A." And I was like, oh. "Man, that looks good." And and to be honest with you, a lot of the students already had good grades in my class. Wait, did you just laugh when they did that? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had to laugh. That's funny. Though. I had to. Yeah. Wait, did any of them ever go? Just kidding, but you can have some, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, they gave you some chicken. They still gave me chicken. They would bring. They would. They would try really hard. They would bring me like all sorts of treats and stuff. Man, you had the nicest fucking students, dude. Well, they they would they would always say, "Give me an A, Mister, and I'll give you this." And I said, okay, and he gave it to me, but I, I would never give him the grade they would, they desired. Wait, did they ever go, what the hell? You said that you were going to give me an A. N no, no, they, they never. Right. And they, so they were, they, I guess they were, they were giving it willingly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, But yeah, I hung out with this particular student a couple of times. And he introduced me to a lot of his friends that were girls. Were they cool? They were super cool, dude. Wait, why? They all they they were in tune with Western culture. And they they spoke knew good English. Yeah, they spoke good English. Um, oh man, they were just hip. They were cool. They were, they were, that if it wasn't for that kid being my student, he would probably be someone I would hang out with 
on a weekend or something. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool, man. Yeah. If, yeah, if he wasn't my student, yeah, he would be someone I would hang out with on the weekend. Yeah. But because he was my student, I had to really be careful. Because to me, my reputation was everything. And it yeah. still is. You still talk to him? No, I don't. I don't talk to Wait, him. Wait, why? I don't know. I don't know why I don't. Well, why don't you... Uh... I just, I just, I just haven't. Do you not want to, or do you want ever want to see what happened to him? I'll probably eventually. Talk so. to him eventually. Yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, that was that one student, that one particular student, and right. he graduated, and he he ended up moving to Dubai, actually. Well, he moved to Dubai. Wow. Yeah, yeah because his uncle ran like a tourist company there, or tourist firm. Wow. And he spoke solid English, so I saw. I've seen pictures of him. He seems to be doing fine. You know, that's pretty cool. All you have to do is speak solid English, and then you've got the keys to the kingdom. Oh, dude, he even invited me to go work for his uncle. Wow, dude. Yeah, in Dubai. Did you ever consider it? No, because that's not your mission. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But it would be cool, though. I think. Yeah. But I mean, just to go to Dubai. Dubai would be cool. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. But anyway, um, aside from that kid, what else like happened um, um, between the students and teachers, or what else happened between the teachers themselves? Oh, the teachers themselves. Yeah. I mean, is there other like student teacher things you were going to talk about, or not? No, I think those were the two big ones that were coming out of there, okay. and they they would always, you know, at the beginning of every year, they would always give us uh, a briefing on oh, that. Oh, they'd give a little freaking yeah. seminar about. Yeah, Don't girls. Yeah, girls. Be careful. Egyptian men got mo- They got swag. That's what they would say. And it's true, man. These guys knew how to talk to girls, dude. Wait, why? Just they just knew. And then, he, and once they learn how to speak English, dude. Oh, it's game over with these guys. They just go after girls. They had that much swag, huh? They're, oh man, these yeah, dude. And then there was one guy who actually wanted me to teach him like slang or like, not you know informal English. Did you ever say the yes? Oh yeah, I taught him a few things. Oh really? And dude, this guy, this guy, yeah, he man, I gave him a few tips on stuff, and yeah, he took off with it. Oh really? Yeah, he he had yeah. That's cool, man. He had some fun with that. Oh yeah. So he uh, he slanged some gals with that slang. Huh? Oh yeah, when every t- every time these some of these college girls would come by, he would Sheesh. he would pick up on a few, and of course the American girls. Thought it was cute, or you know, him trying to, you know, and him trying to use slang, slang, and you know, and the girls were flattered by it. So yeah, he got girls like that, like that. But he wasn't that that student that I'm talking about. Never had any issues with, you know, he never had any problem with teachers and stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Inappropriate relationships, sexual relationships between teachers and students. That that's, you know, a lot of that stuff tries to get they they try to cover it up. And I'm not gonna say who they is, but it's a lot of the stuff that's not talked about. Yeah, I mean, I bet the principal would be pissed if he heard this podcast. Oh, he'd be super pissed, probably. What would he say to you? He'd probably contact me. What, what would he say? It's like, why are you saying that stuff? You can hurt the, the the organization or the school or are you worried about uploading this a little bit what do you think is <laughs> gonna happen i just hope that no one hears you know no one recognizes <laughs> me well the thing is you're not staying saying what the organization is well i'm not saying i'm trying to keep names trying to keep as much as i can anonymous than as far as yeah it's all concerned. anonymous it's fine um yeah and because i actually told told this story at my church and there was backlash. Um, Wait, why? Because I'm exposing stuff that goes, that happens out there. And they don't want you to. Yeah. Why? They don't want, because it shines bad light on the organization. Then, then people aren't going to want to go. Oh. People aren't going to want to put their hard earned money into helping the school out. So a lot of this is like hush, hush under the table stuff. Yeah. 
Well, that being said, let's get into the dirt, man. What else happened? The the, the teacher won. Well, there was there was one particular teacher there that just made hell for everyone. Oh, is this the bitchy one that yeah. was dating the asshole guy? Yeah. Oh shit. Let's hear this. She was what well, she was OCD or quote unquote OCD. Like everything from what I heard, everything had to be perfect in the house. Like everything had to be spotless. So she was real OCD or was it like O C P D or I don't know what it was, dude, but she was just anal about everything. Like yeah. every like there couldn't be water spots on like the faucet. You know? There couldn't wow. be like water in, in the sink. It had to be all dried and whatnot. Wow, man. And so she was very powered, you know, she, she power tripped a lot and she had two, my first year she had two roommates and she got into a fight with one of them. Fist fight? I, I, uh, a, like a cussing or yelling match. Oh. And it got so bad that the girl and one of the girls ended up having to move out. Because she couldn't stand being living with the with the devil. We'll call her the devil. The devil. You're gonna yeah. call her the devil. Oh my gosh, she's that bad, dude. She was bad, dude. Oh man, so she was kind of mean to you too, huh? Oh, me and her got into it. Oh man, we got into it once. About what? I don't. I don't know. Well, I don't. I mean, rem- I'm just gonna let you tell the story and I, your own. Oh, well, order. and you'll get there probably, right? Yeah. She would get. She would do whatever she could to get people out of the house. So she would yell at people. She would try to like control people. Uh, she would always can. She would always say something, and if you disagreed with her, she would just tell you you're wrong. Yeah. Even though you might be right and she might be wrong, or she would convince you that she would do whatever she could to convince you that she was right. And it got really that that got really annoying because the principal ended up siding with her and a lot of stuff. Oh, jeez. And so you would go to tell him if you would go tell him, look, she's being unreasonable. She's being like a bully. Well, what are you doing to make her cause that? Or what are you doing to 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 make her act that way? Wait, did she ever call you a bully? No, we never talked, dude. Me and her just like we we only said a few things once, like maybe at most twenty things to each other. Wow. The two years that we were there. So wait, did the students um did the students like her? The or students, they... yeah. She there was one thing about her and she could do her job. Oh, she was, she was good teacher. at her job. Was she super anal and particular with her students? Probably. But she was good at her job. That's good. But as a person, as a human being, man, as like Trying to be friends with her, dude. Why'd that one guy marry her? Because he's a <laughs> loneliness man. Loneliness grips you out there, dude. I know, but that guy sounds like an asshole. How could he tolerate someone like that? We couldn't figure it out because he was an introvert. He was straight up an introvert. He would be in his room for like days, dude. Never come out. Wow. And like she was like an extrovert, like power tripping, and like everybody worshiping. She thought she was the greatest thing to ever touch on Egypt. Maybe he just oil. wanted a girl to control him. I don't. I don't. Well, he came from the military, so he was used to having people yell at him, and she she loved to yell. So, yeah, that's the thing. Some some men, for whatever psychological reason, like that. Yeah, they like being you know. Yeah. Controlled by women. I don't know. And when you're, he was thirty five, and she was thirty five, and they're getting older. You're in a place where you get lonely really easily. Why not, man? Why not? And he was the only one who can tolerate her. But she managed to kick out one of my friends uh, out. She laughed. We'll call my friend um, uh, C. We'll call her C. You know, C ended up leaving because she couldn't stand being in the house with the devil. Like, Everything you did wasn't good enough for her, and she would just get on your case about everything. Why aren't the the towels neatly? So she never folded? got on your case, though, huh? Oh well, well, one time we were on a um, one time. 
I don't know how we ended up going. We went, it was a group, two separate groups. We went to Sinai and somehow we ended up coming back on the same bus. Jeez. And we came back like at three o'clock in the morning to Cairo, in Cairo. Three o'clock in the morning in Cairo is dangerous, dude. And I said, who the hell's bright idea was this to come at 3 a.m., you know, 3 a.m. to Cairo? Jeez. And she, rah, 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 rah. you're a grown ass man. Rah, rah. Wait, so she started yelling at me? Yeah, she that? started yelling and was like, dude, I told her to shut up. Oh, really? Ah, you don't tell me to shut up. <laughs> you just go, shut up. I Yeah, dude. <laughs> she sounded like a pain in the ass. Oh, dude. It was just like, yeah, every, every every little thing, if you told her your plan about what you want to do, well, did you think about this? What, you, you, what you're doing can't be done. Why are you doing that? There's no buses that come around that time. Your plan is dumb. Your plan is stupid. Like every little thing you would try to do, she'd say, it's dumb. It's stupid. It's worthless. You're dumb. Really? Like, yeah, she would just do whatever in her power to bring you down. Wow. Like everything. It was just, it was just everything she did was perfect. So everything she hated her. Oh, ever, oh, dude. Even the vice principal didn't like her. He told, he told me that. Why did the principal like her? Because he's an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, idiot. he, I don't know why he liked her. He just sided with her a lot. Maybe his wife and her were good friends. I don't know. Yeah. Her, his, the principal's wife was probably friends with the devil. I don't know. The <laughs> devil. <laughs> I just, I just had to say that. I love how, I love how, you actually call her the devil. Oh man, it was just yeah. <laughs> the devil. And yeah. And so there was. Yeah, there was. It was just. It was just bad. Me and her would just look at each other and just look the opposite way. We would we would see each other and we would just kind of like look look down and walk past each other. Yeah, we couldn't st- we couldn't stand being around each other. She couldn't stand you. I couldn't stand her. Oh, but she she didn't mind you though. It was a mutual thing. We hated each other. <laughs> at least I think she hated me. I'm pretty sure she did. Why would she hate you? It sounded like because were... no, because we got into that one fight into that one oh, argument. Just because you just said because shut of up. that, just because of that. That was the. That Pretty was the much. Argument. You said shut up. And yeah, that was it? and that was it. That was like I was on her hit list already. <laughs> That's really funny. You said shut up one time, and that was the whole something thing. like that. I don't remember exactly. Were and there, uh, other times where you were thinking about calling her a piece of shit or anything, like oh, I I would think the nastiest. Like, I wish I there was a whole list of things I wish I could have said to her, but I'm glad I didn't because it wasn't worth my all my energy. I mean, I was a dude. I was. You know, I was super depressed and super lonely and just like, I didn't want to, I didn't have enough energy to fight with people. Yeah. Um, but she would bully people out of, of her house to the point where one of my friend C moved out and then my other friend, uh, we'll call her G, my friend G actually ended up going back to her, na- to her respected country because of her. That's really bad, man. Now, she made up the excuse that... I don't know what excuse she made up, but I know for a fact, I, I swear I know, dude, that she left because of that, because of the devil. I know she left because of her. That sucks, man. She wouldn't, She didn't admit it, but I knew in, in... I knew I knew in my soul, dude. I knew in my heart that my friend G left because a devil forced her out of a, out of there, dude. She would just bully people. So wait, why dude. did uh, these people live with her ever? Because when we're there, the teachers are there. They're all they're all thrown into a room or into a house, and they're just said work things out. Man, you uh, you had the mosquito net though, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and so they threw these girls into a really tiny house. And they said, work it out. And the devil's presence was too strong there. And so one of them, my friend C, ended up moving to a different house. My friend G ended up moving back to her respected country. Why couldn't she find a uh, another house to move to? I don't I don't know, but she. I think she... You know, my friend G struggled a lot. 
She oh, didn't yeah. speak very good English. Actually, she didn't speak a word of English. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure what she was doing there if she wasn't teaching. I'm not exactly sure what she was doing. But I think she became so overwhelmed with her lo- you know, lack of English, uh, being bullied by the devil, and just not being able to like communicate with people. She just had enough of it. And so she left. Were you able to communicate with her? I didn't, you know, I didn't. I, again, I was so depressed. Dude, I was in my room most of the time. I just didn't talk to her much. And, and we'll get more, we'll, yeah, we'll get into me later on. So is that a part 2C thing? No, no, it's part of, it, it, it falls under the, the, the girls. The, yeah, part 2C. Yeah. And so, so yeah, the, the devil managed to kick two girls out and in my second year she managed to kick out the girl I was dating out of the house and actually made oh my, my girlfriend cry dude she made my girlfriend cry and so I was so pissed yeah I was mind? yeah I was about to go over there but one of my other friends you know said don't talk to you out of it yeah you should have bitched her out oh, I should have you're but made made my yeah made the girl I was dating at the time cry, and sucks, man. I think she almost she just barely got there, dude. And oh, like it already made her cry. And wait, she just moved in there. She just like a like a two weeks into her term, made her cry already. <laughs> wait, how are you dating her within two? Weeks? Well, that's with later. It was sorry, we weren't dating at that time. It oh, was, we okay. dated later. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, man. So, so the girl that I later dated, you know. All right, okay. Um, but made her, yeah. And she ended up, and the funny part was, that they ended up giving my girlfriend her own house. And they kept the devil with another group of people. And like the devil was so pissed off, dude. That my girlfriend got her own place because the devil wanted to have her own, <laughs> her own domain, her own realm. <laughs> but the devil, the, the but devil, the devil didn't get it. get it, and she, <laughs> I knew she was. From what my girlfriend told me, she was the devil was fuming, dude. <laughs> That's funny, man. She was fuming. The devil wanted her own domain, her own domain, and my, she couldn't handle living with people. Man. She could, you couldn't put her with other people. Wait, who did you live with? How many people did you live with? I lived with. Like four other people, four other guys, you, and luckily roommates? we had all we we had our own rooms. I think I know okay. I had my own room. Oh, okay, luck. I was lucky to have my own room. Yeah. So, yeah, the the devil. Well, and eventually the devil ended up kicking out another person, and the devil got her own realm, her own domain, her own house, her own. Room. How many people throughout the course of the time you were there? Did the devil manage to bully out of an apartment? So my friend C, my friend G, and the girl I was dating at the time. But then there was more people that you said, right? And there was some. There was another girl, I think. Oh no, 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 no! Yeah, yeah. The other, <laughs> and then my friend um, uh, L. Ended up moving. I was just like, I had enough of this. And she, she just left. There was like four or five people. Four girls that she, the devil managed to kick out. And the principal knew the problem and he did nothing about it. He did nothing. He never did nothing about it. And that pissed me off. Dude, this teacher is bullying other teachers and you're doing nothing about it. You're just letting it slide. Dude, that guy sounds like such a... Dickwad. He was. I was like, do something about it. This person is making people's lives hell. What did he say when you told him? That? I didn't tell him that. Oh, why not? <sighs> because they would. Well, I don't. I don't know, dude. It was just if you told, if you spoke out against the principal, he would have like a million things to say about you. And so, really? yeah, there would be an argument, and it wouldn't resolve to anything. Because he would just shit on you the whole time. Yeah, and actually, the the vice principal understood a. This, you know, I talked to him about it and he understood. He's like, yeah, he argues against me and favors with her. So 
the principal was actually actually the principal and the vice principal didn't like each other. So there were there was actually constant fighting between the them. Principal doesn't sound like a very likable guy. You know, the principal was prior to that job was only a dean. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> was that my roommate? Can you hear my roommate? <laughs> she wasn't talking about us. Right? No, no, she wasn't. Okay. Um. The, the yeah the principal prior to being the principal there was a dean at a different school so he had no experience that i am aware of to being a principal and the only reason he got that job is because mommy was high up on the chain his mom Uh, his mommy was high up on the chain of command and said so he was not equipped to handle that job. no not at all he was more of an introvert why didn't they try to find someone more capable? Because they... Who the hell want... I'm sorry. I it, Egypt's a tough place to get, man. Egypt's a tough place to go. Okay. Do you think you would be a principal? If if you... You think you would be a better principal than him? No. No? No. Why not? Because I've never... I don't have... Exp- I'm, I'm only a foot soldier, man. But you have a you have a spatial science degree. That has... Oh, <laughs> man. That has, that has nothing to deal with it. it I know. But <laughs> I just like to say that. Huh? Actually, he was a pastor. But that still didn't. I don't. That still didn't make him qualified. I don't think. But then again, I'm not qualified to be a teacher either. Sorry, man. That's fine. So, but at a position like that, you would hope to find someone who is qualified for that. And whenever problems, you know, he was never. I I, I hardly ever saw him. And actually, he they he actually removed himself from the disciplinary committee. Why? Because he didn't want to know about the problems going on. <laughs> he he no he he was very short tempered. Oh. And so he wasn't helping the situation. So he formed an actual discipline committee, which I actually sat in a couple times. Did he like tell your speak your mind about stuff? No, no, I would, I would sit in. He wasn't at those committees, but I would. Every time we had a problem, I would sit in. With any time a student had problems or got into trouble, I would sit in in the committee. Why? I just requested to be there, and they they accepted it. Did they, you do anything in the committee, or I I gave my opinion on on some on on handing out punishments. Yeah. Did they listen to your opinion? Yeah. Oh, I I I made sure that I was heard <laughs> on All what right. particular. Um, instance. So were you respected out there? It sounded like people didn't respect you very much most of the time. But. I think I think the teachers weren't the teachers were forgotten. Yeah. And that's actually kind of leading into the girl why, Yeah, because which I can it can blend in a little bit. You know, the teachers there were forgotten. We were there to fend for ourselves. Um the the administration didn't really do much to help us out with our culture shock, with our depression and loneliness that we were experiencing out there. Because when you're living with people in close quarters, man, there's tensions arise, dude. Yeah, I Ten- bet. Tensions flare up. Yeah, I bet. And so you can't, you're stuck there. It's like it be, this place, this school that's fenced off – is no longer a safe place. It's like prison. So wait, you guys lived on the school grounds? We lived on school grounds. Oh, okay. And so, and the only way to get out is if you actually had the courage to go out. And get your own place? No, not the courage just to step out and like go into, because very few of us, Eventually, every I think everyone was able to do it, but I I actually had to learn Arabic quickly in order to get out of the school. To be able to communicate with people, to say I want to go here, how do I get there? How hard was it to learn some Arabic? Uh, I was desperate, so I learned quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is that what you would just do in your lonely days in your apartment? I would, yeah, I would practice Arabic. Wow. Yeah. I would, I would practice quite a bit of Arabic. You still but remember some Arabic? Or? I remember some. Actually, not too long ago, I was talking to some guys from Saudi Arabia. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um, 
of course it wasn't you know i not as good as i used to be yeah but. um and so yeah the the administration and then the principal's wife was just as terrible man like she like well, she was probably friends with the devil probably i think she might have been but she wasn't really like concerned like she wasn't too concerned about what was going on with the with the other teachers she just didn't care huh? yeah she didn't care i mean she had her family i mean she had her family to take care of i guess but when you're like when you are the head teacher and the principal and that's your school you have a responsibility to your other teachers man yeah i mean like their mental health is critical we're, i mean we're far away from our families we're far away from from what makes us comfortable and a, like Friday, I guess we had like Friday lunches or Friday dinners, but you're having like lunch or dinner with people you already live with. I think the thing is that we had to be friends. We had to be coworkers. A lot of you did not want to be friends. Yeah. We had to be friends, coworkers and family with all the same people. In oh, such geez. close quarters. And that that doesn't fly, man. There's a reason why I don't live with my mom anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's it's just tensions flare up, man. And you fight with people. Did you ever fight with people? Oh, I fought with everyone, dude. Every single I didn't person? Ha- I didn't have friends, dude. <laughs> Wait, really? Nobody liked you? No, it wasn't like that. It was just you had to defend yourself, man. Because people if shitting on you yeah, you? because if people if you let people come down on you, dude, that's they'll just take advantage of you. How about the roommates? Did they like you? They were I. They were okay. We didn't talk much. I was always mostly in my room. We were mostly in our rooms. Yeah, like that one particular guy, the other American, the imperialist. He, me, was, a, he was a roommate of yours. He lived in the same house as me. Yeah. Oh, jeez, really? Me and him, we didn't. We never looked at. He each didn't other. live with the devil. And when they got married, I think. Oh, sheesh. But. Um, the imperialist. <laughs> yeah, me and him really, we never talked. We Devil and imperialist made yeah. for each other. <laughs> yeah, me and him never really talked. Uh, How many times did you guys talk throughout the entire course? Oh, of- man, like maybe 10 times. <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but we didn't talk a whole lot. Pass some bread. Pass the bread. That's pretty much all we said. Yeah. What about the other roommates? Were any of them cool? They were cool. There were two guys from Mexico. They were pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. So they'd speak Spanish to each other? They speak Spanish. And I actually was able to keep up my Spanish with them, too. You spoke some Spanish to them, Yeah, some Spanish. Actually, we only talked in Spanish. Oh, you know what, man? That sounds cool. They must have been cool roommates, man. You know, no, they were were cool. They were cool. Were you guys like, you guys weren't friends? Why not? We, we... We, I think we liked what we had, and we didn't want to ruin it, <laughs> so we just left it at that. Uh, okay. We just kept it simple. We didn't want to. <laughs> right. So you think if you would have talked to them more, you would have had tensions with those guys? Oh, probably. I had. I, there, there was one time where there was some exchange between one of me and one of them, and so. What kind of exchange? Uh, something dumb. I don't even remember. It was so dumb. I don't even remember. Did you guys cuss each other out? No, Spanish? no, no. It wasn't like that. No, it wasn't anything like that. Oh, okay. But we, we liked what we had, and so we just kept it at that. <laughs> so we were just like, hey, what's up? We were talking Spanish. You know what's How, funny, man? What's that? It's an imperialist and three Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, the Mexicans would constantly be arguing with him, dude. Oh, the Mexicans would shit on that imperialist. What would he say? Oh, dude, he would be all about building the wall and telling them oh, that. Oh, God. Yeah. So they'd tell him about Trump. Yeah, and they would argue about immigration and and whatnot. And I remember one time the imperialist said Spanish made no sense and English is like the best language in the world, which <laughs> Yeah. That's dumb, dude. He he said that English originated from America. Wait, he said that? Yeah. He said American English is the best. That yeah, guy's, that guy's retarded. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I had to deal with, man. And I never, I would, oh, I, I would just like smirk and then just walk away. I bet those Mexicans hated. Him. Oh yeah, they weren't very. They, you know, did we, they ever curse him? 
nurse about him in Spanish to you? No, no, because they were pastors. They were. Uh, oh, they so were, they were really peace loving guys. Yeah, and... but they would. They had. They had their opinions about him. They really did not like him. Huh? Yeah, they they weren't too. They weren't. They weren't going to say, "Hey, let's go hang out sometime." Wait, did did you ever, you know, kind of share share the rant with them about that guy? Like, oh yeah. You oh, guys, yeah. you guys just sat around three Mexicans talking. About talking. <laughs> yeah, we would. We just thought his ideas were. Retarded. Yeah, yeah they were just. He's just dumb. so extreme, man. Like. Yeah, you know, he was way too extreme. Like I, I mean, I'm I'm kind of conservative leaning and all that stuff. I mean, but uh, all that stuff's crazy, you know. All, yeah. all that's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, and it was during the height of like, all right, Donald Trump is coming into office, you know, he's running, he's winning. Yeah. And then this guy is like, like he, uh, yeah, anyways, he was, yeah, total Trump supporter. And I, I have, I have no problem with Trump supporters, yeah. but when they start saying like crazy stuff, man, <laughs> like, yeah. Like I just kind of like okay, um, yeah. When he starts starts saying stuff like English, American English is the best. English is the best language. I mean stuff it, like that. It's I like, mean, you can dude. tell you're, you're the only reason he's saying that is just to be an ass. No, he really believed it, dude. Wait, really? Yes, he really believed it. What what the hell? What what was his reasoning? What makes American English the best? He had no reason. He just said it's just the best. He firmly believed that. He believed that, dude. And I believe that he believed that. <laughs> I think he was just being an ass. You man. know what? I thought that too, man. But no, he was dead serious about that. And so I would just, I, I just, whatever, dude. I yeah, just, whatever. I would just walk away and whatever. So <laughs> that's pretty cool though, man. Um and yeah. And so yeah, we had the tensions would flare up, man. I mean me and him me and the imperialist guy into a couple of fights. Me and my friend Jay got into a fight one time. Really? Yeah. And he this guy was awesome, dude. This guy's like this guy's from Australia, dude. Oh wow! And this guy holds nothing back. I don't know if you know if you've ever met Australians or if ever been friends with one of them. Yeah, I've they, been friends with a couple. They of them. they just have a loose tongue, dude. And I love that. <laughs> I love yeah, that yeah. about them. This my friend Jay was like that, dude. And me and because we were such close quarters that me and my my best friend ended up fighting, dude. About what? It's just stupid stuff. It's always it was always about stupid stuff, but because you're such in close quarters, and you're all depressed, and, and you're all depressed, you're, you're all stressed out about everything, and so you're all extremely irritable and neurotic. And yeah, and the littlest things become big, big, big things. You know, big deals. You know, it's funny how the administration made no care about the issues there because zero, the, zero. Those are your zero. human resources, man. Yeah, you go. Oh my. Oh, you, know, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, any any employer, any sort of leader of an especially an, an organization, a leader of, of an organization that's all about, you know, sacrificing, putting blood, sweat and tears for, for a better for a better cause, you have to care for your human resources. Yeah. Especially in such horrid conditions. Yeah. I mean you I we couldn't be felt that we couldn't go to them because we would be criticized. Oh, I thought you were tougher. They were. They sounded like fucking shitty people, man. Like we would try to act, ask for advice, and we'd just be condemned, man. We would just. We would ask for advice, and then they begged for you to come back. We, I, we just. I never felt comfortable going to them and talking about my problems, <sighs> and, or or my struggles. Yeah. And so that's that's part of the that's a lot of like not being able to communicate with the people who are there to take care of you was pretty depressing dude like you couldn't yeah, share hard, your man. you couldn't share your feelings with them because either they were siding with someone else or they the just devil. or they yeah the devil or they just saw you as like someone weak that's stupid man and i remember one of the vice principal told telling me 
everyone here is replaceable. Everyone here is expendable. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, you're probably right, but, you know, you didn't have to be a, <laughs> a jerk about it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a religious, it's a, it's a religious school. Yeah. So seeing this particular person, AKA the devil singing in front of church, singing about God's praises, singing about how God's a loving God, and then turning around and treating people like crap, dude, like really? Like you call yourself a Christian and you're treating people like, wait, you guys went to church together. Yeah. You guys went to church together and, and we ate together and we ate together. She, I can't believe people do that. That's what drove me crazy, dude. It's like, how can you go, okay, you you claim to be this religious Christian, God-loving person. He you, made no effort to. Yeah, you go you go on stage, you, you sing and you're crying, and then all of a sudden you get off stage and you're treating people like crap? Like, that makes no sense. Man, like, come on, really? Yeah. Like, how do you, like, man, that's talent. Teach me how to do that. Dude, you know it's the, one of the problems of um, religious organizations. What's that? A lot of the times they turn into this, to this, you know, superiority contest. Oh my gosh, this, dude! So this moral, this moral superiority, superiority contest. Oh, with, that with this that hierarchy pecking order of I'm better than you because. You see, I've I've been here longer, and that therefore I sacrificed more for God. You piece of shit! Don't speak up down to me. You're nothing but a peasant. <laughs> it's just, and that's how it was. It's it's so just, counterintuitive. Yeah, like the devil. She thought she, like the way she acted, the way she behaved. <laughs> like I formed this like this profile of her. It's like you think you're the greatest. You think you're God's gift to Egypt, don't you? <laughs> Like you think you're the greatest thing since the pyramids to hit Egypt. How do you, how can you, how do you do it? Like, how do you say you're a Christian and then turn around and kick four people out of your house and yell at them? Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Dude, it, it should take a lot to yell at someone, especially if you are someone that holds Christian that, that, that follows a Christian teaching. Right. Right. You know? I mean, even, even, oh man, even the, the principal dude thought he was the greatest thing there. Yeah. Years later, after I come to Ridgecrest, he calls me up. And the only thing I remember about that conversation is I wonder, he told me, I wonder what my legacy will be like. I wonder how I will be remembered. That's what he said. That's what he told me. And you're like, you're and I was like, remembered for being trash. And I, and I, and I said, I thought this was about, I, I thought this wasn't about us. I thought us being there had nothing to do with us being recognized or being quote unquote remembered. What did he say? I didn't tell him that. Oh, I wish I held so many things back, man. I held so many things back, man. You should have gave these people their freaking. They sh- you should have just let loose on these. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I can't. It could have, dude. Like I thought, I came, I went to Egypt knowing that I'm not. I don't. I didn't want to get recognized. I didn't want to be. I cringe when people tell me you did a great job in Egypt. Like I didn't go to Egypt to be recognized, to be remembered, to yeah. what is going to be, what is my legacy in Egypt. That's why I came up with the ripple thing. I'm just a ripple, man. There were many before me, and there'll be many after. I'm only continuing the work of the previous person. Yeah. And hopefully, the person ahead of me will continue the work that I didn't finish. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a ripple, man. I'm just a ripple. I'm only doing. I'm only there. To do the best that I can for these people. Yeah. And whether I'm remembered or not, it doesn't bother me. Because you're just a ripple. Because I'm just there, just like everyone else before me. There were many before me, and there'll be many after. Yeah, man. And I'm not worried about how I'm going to be remembered. And this principle, this guy, oh, I worry about my legacy. 
I'm worried about how I'm going to be remembered. Like I thought this was this was this was never about us. It was about them. It was about the people we were trying to help. Yeah. Missed the point. And his and his and and I oh the thing that drives me crazy and and this is like a very delicate line with with religious people. I was I was I remember my debriefing coming when I was ready to leave Egypt. Yeah. The 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 principal's wife was debriefing me and she said, "Well, you know, we ha- we went into this conversation. It's like, well, you know, we went into this conversation." And I asked her, "So why did you come to Egypt?" Yeah. And she's like, "Oh, well, we felt God's calling. Well, everyone feels God's calling." That's still not that's that still doesn't justify why you're here. To sorry, to me, I was so upset. I should give a little bit of background. I was so upset that even people saying God brought me I you know, I heard God's calling here wasn't good enough for me. Yeah, well, because anyone could say that. Anyone can say that. Yeah. Anyone can say that. Anyone can justify saying, I heard God's calling. I felt God's you know, God calling me here. Anyone can say that. Yeah. And that's why it wasn't good enough for me when she said that, when she told me that. We, I felt God was calling me here. That's not good enough for me. I'm sorry. Because anyone, like you said, anyone can say that. And so I was just, I was, I was just, I was done with it, man. I even, I told one of the, the one of the head teachers there i you know this is supposed to be a religious institute but i didn't feel that god was here i yeah. straight up told her that i said god's not here what'd she say she had no words because and you know what it wasn't me who felt that i talked to another i talked to c not too long ago and she said the same thing she said I felt that God was not there. You can feel that, man. Definitely. You can feel that, man. We we were just so mistreated. We were forgotten. We were forsaken. Yeah. We had so many things that we needed help with. Our mental health was a wreck. And we couldn't we felt that we couldn't reach out to the administrator to the head teacher or to the to the principal or vice principal. Because we were people didn't care about God or are the are the better good. They just cared about their legacy, know, man. Their legacy, making themselves feel good about about themselves, and just I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. But we felt that we couldn't reach out to them because we, if we did, we would be condemned or we would be they brought didn't down. Care about you? They, we, we, they were just numbers. Yeah, we were expendable. You know, if they really followed God's teaching, they would they would treat you guys with compassion. They would. They would treat you guys with patience. They would treat you guys with understanding and try to, and try to be better. Maybe no, maybe not as many people would have left so fast. You know, maybe people would have been better teachers. Yeah. Maybe people wouldn't have been, you know, constantly flirting with students. Yeah. You know. Just a little bit more attention to their teachers. I think there was a pa- a previous pastor there. The vice principal asked them for a a, a peer review. And the pastor told him, you should take better care of your missionaries. Yeah. We were never, I I felt, and a lot of us felt, and it wasn't just me, but a lot of us felt that we weren't cared for. Yeah. We felt that we, these were the people that we were supposed to depend on for our sanity. And we would get shot down every time. Or we just we we felt that we couldn't reach out to them because we got shot down previous they were times. They're supposed to be your shepherds, man. And we were They're supposed led to be astray. Leaders. Yeah. They're not leaders. I think they fell short. That's my opinion. I think they fell short. They're I, not I leaders, knew, man. They're just businessmen. I I knew that there was tension between the principal and the vice principal. Yeah. I knew there was. Uh, the yeah, the vice principal told me that there was tension between them. So, uh, yeah, we just felt lost. Yeah. I, I remember one time, one of my friends, my second year, my friend, we'll call him T. 
there was this huge thing. We'll get into that later. But he asked the the vice principal for like help for advice. Yeah. And the principal just told him to pray about it. And I mean, okay, but that's such a you know people say that to me, and it kind of sometimes it got it bothers me a little. bit. It does bother me. Well, it it, it like because I know to pray about it, dude. I right. know that already. You don't need to tell me that. I pray about it, but right. That's why I'm here talking to you. I'm not talking to God right now. Right. It's like yeah. I'm. Um. What do you think I'm already doing? And what if God, you know, God led me to to come to you, and then you tell me to go pray again? Like I'm already doing that. Yeah. And so. Yeah, we just we just felt that we couldn't we couldn't go to we we couldn't go to them for help. Um, and so that, that was, that was the dynamic between the teachers. Yeah. We, yeah, I, I remember crying, dude. I remember crying with the, uh, talking to, to the, uh, vice principal's wife. I told her, I only remember being happy like for one semester out of my two years, well, you know, there was uh, four semesters. Yeah. And I only remember being happy for one of them. And I told her, God w- isn't here. And being a religious institute, come on, man. I mean, dang. So that that's <laughs> that was that was that dude. Oh man. And I was I it took me a year and a half to recover from that. Jeez. Well that's yeah, part three though, man. Yeah, that has yeah. That's gonna be part three. We'll part, talk about that then. Yeah. Because it mixes in with why I got into a relationship. Yeah. When I probably shouldn't have. And that's the good segue, because next uh, episode, we're going to be talking about girls. We're going <laughs> to talk about the relationships, the loneliness, yeah, the heartbreak. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. This has been a good episode. Are you, you I, I hope you... Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I've said everything I needed to say. I hope people found it interesting. <laughs> I found it interesting. I'm good. Gonna, I hope so. Yeah, good. I'm going to enjoy... It's going to take me a while, but I'm going to enjoy re-listening to these. Yeah. Yeah. You know, honestly, um, you really paint a picture of that place. You've painting, you've been painting a picture of that place with the characters. Yeah. You know the, you know, just it's it's a, I think you know this is a pretty good. I I I've liked this episode so far. I, I mean, I've liked this whole series so far. I've liked this episode. Yeah. So yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope, you know, I I am painting it in a particular way because it that's that's how I saw it and that's how other teachers described it to me as well yeah so it wasn't I wasn't the only one who felt this way yeah no I'm not trying to say that you're penny no 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 no, no. but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed Um, stay tuned for the next episode and uh, make sure to share this with your friends on the intro And uh, catch you next time. Right? Catch you next time. Hope you have a nice day. Grab some coffee. <laughs> pick your feet up. Relax. And relax. <laughs> <laughs>